There was once a king who had ruled wisely for many years, but who was old and sick and knew that his time was come. Now, the king had three sons. The two eldest were even more clever and wise than the king. <laughs> At least, uh, that's what they always said. Nobody is more clever than us, they would often say, and being so clever, we ought to know. <laughs> yeah, well... The king also had a third and youngest son. But he was very quiet and kept himself to himself so that people assumed that he must be the stupid one in the family. They even called him the stupid prince <laughs> and threw bricks at him in the street. Anyway, one day, the king called the sons to his sickbed and said, My sons, I am old. Very old. Almost indescribably old. <laughs> and, uh, yep, you guessed it. I'm dying. No, no, do not grieve. It... What do you mean, you're not grieving? Grieve! Grieve! Right, now listen. <clears throat> uh, uh, I have decided that the next king will be whoever brings me the most beautiful carpet. Yeah, now that's what I call a quest. <laughs> And he took out three feathers. Each of you must follow one of these feathers, he commanded, and blew them in the air. <laughs> well, one feather went north, and off went one of the clever sons following it. One feather went south, and the other clever son followed that one. But the third feather just twisted round in the air and went nowhere. And that was the one that the stupid son was left with. Ha, 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 there you are, stupid, said the clever sons. You can follow that one. <laughs> and off they went. So, he sat down, feeling sad and left out. But as he looked at the feather, he noticed that it was lying next to a trap door in the ground. He opened the trap door. <coughs> and there was a ladder leading him down into a strange chamber lit by a strange greenish glow. And the stupid prince was just thinking, oh, when he heard, Ready? Huh? Ready? Huh? Looking round, who should he see but a big fat frog with bright blinking eyes and a big rubbery smile. And the frog said, Good day to you, young sir. Hmm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> said the prince. And what are you searching for, deep under the ground in the glowing green realms? Hmm? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the most beautiful carpet in the world. <laughs> oh, well then look no further, said the frog. Give me that feather. And with it, he produced the most incredible carpet with rich patterns and a thousand colours which he happily presented to the stupid prince. Now, meanwhile, the two clever princes had been following their feathers north and south and both of them had arrived at the same thought. You know, our younger brother's so stupid, they thought, he's never going to find anything. So why do we need to waste our time looking? Ah. So, one of the uh, clever princes just snatched a dirty old blanket from the first beggar that he saw lying in the snow. While the other stole a snotty handkerchief from a farmer's wife who had hay fever and brought that back to the castle. Well, <laughs> it was obvious that the stupid prince had won. No, 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 oh, no, no, he can't be the king, the other two said. No, no, he's stupid. Everybody knows that, don't we all? Yes, yes, he'd be a really stupid choice, Daddy. So, the old king had to try again. <sighs> Okay, uh, okay, look, this is what I've decided. What have I decided? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> the next king shall be the one who brings me the most beautiful and expensive ring. And he blew three more feathers into the air. <laughs> oh, my teeth. <laughs> Sorry. But once again, the stupid prince's feather had landed by the trap door. So, he climbed down the ladder and found himself once again in the dank, luminous chamber. Good day to you, young sir. Again? <laughs> oh, uh, 
Hello again. <laughs> and what do you search for this time? Hmm? Actually, I, I'm looking for the most beautiful and expensive ring in the world. <laughs> ah, a ring, is it? Well, young sir, you need look no further. Give me the camera. The frog produced the most gorgeous ring with 79 diamonds sparkling like stars and set in the purest gold. <laughs> the two clever princes, however, couldn't be bothered to scour the kingdom looking for beautiful jewellery. One had just snatched the ring pull from a can of horrible fizzy grown-up stuff, while the other had taken a ring from a carrier pigeon's leg. So, the so-called stupid prince won the second competition too. And once again, the brothers were very put out. I, I, no, 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 this won't do. I, I, no, listen, listen. I would say he probably cheated, Daddy. One said, yes, yes, my brother's right. He's a cheat. Beat him, Daddy, beat the cheat. Oh, oh. oh God, blimey, kids, <laughs> sighed the king. All right, all right, boys, listen. Last chance. Whoever brings home the most beautiful woman to be his wife, he shall be king. And he blew the three feathers. Now forget it. Well, Sure enough, off went one clever son, south by southeast. Off went another, north by northwest. But the youngest son followed his feather the same way as before. Good day to you once again, young sir. So, it's the most beautiful woman you're after, is it? Yeah. How did you know that? And now never you mind about that, young lad. But the truth is... <laughs> that the most beautiful woman is out at the moment. Uh, but I'll tell you what to do. And the frog winked at him. You take this hollow turnip and also these six mice. Yeah, but <laughs> what do I do with them, Mr. Frog? Then you do this. And you touch the turnip with the feather and at once, ting, the turnip turned into a beautiful golden carriage and the mice became horses. The frog then leapt into the carriage and turned into an utterly beautiful princess. <laughs> and what about the two other brothers? Well, yeah, they'd been too lazy to look properly. One had just grabbed hold of a dairy maid with huge fat legs, two chins and teeth like a horse. And the other one had found an old washerwoman with yellow skin, warts all over her bottom and a, and a big flourishing moustache. <laughs> the two wives uh, that, that you two have found are... Uh, they're repulsive, said the king. Uh, but my youngest son has found a true queen, and he will inherit my kingdom. -dom. <laughs> the two older sons were furious. Our youngest brother is stupid, the first one said. He can't be king. Let's have a final test, Daddy. Yes, that's what we'll do. One final test. Go on, Daddy, please. Please, Daddy. Daddy, please, go on. One last test. Can we just have another test? One more, Daddy. Please, go on. Go on, Daddy. Please be great. Everyone thinks it's great, don't we? Yeah, everyone thinks it's great. Go on. One more. Just one more test. Go on, Daddy. Please, please. Please. Oh, please, Daddy. Please. Please, please, please. Oh, shut up, said the king. All right. You can have one more test. There's a... Oh, blimey. I should have been dead hours ago. I don't know. Look, all right, boys. What do you want to do? Well, I know, Daddy, said one of the sons. We will hang a hoop in the middle of the hall. The wife who can jump through it will be the winner, and her husband will be king. Ha ha! What about that for an idea? So, a wide metal hoop was hung in the air, and the big fat dairy maid was the first to go. She took a deep breath, tensed herself. <laughs> wrinkled up her face so that her nose almost disappeared into her chin and charged across the floor. But she only got about six inches in the air and came down with a great crash and broke both her ankles. The scrawny washerwoman was the next off the mark. She sniffed at the air with her little pointy nose. She took a deep breath. That was as deep as she could do. She hunched up her shoulders and then she whizzed across the floor, whistling as she went, for it knocked herself out on a beam. Then it was the turn of the beautiful young wife of the third brother. Yeah, she leapt through the ring as, as easily and as neatly as if she'd been jumping all her life. Which, if you think about it, of course, she had. <laughs> well, that was the end of the matter. And that is the end of the story of the three feathers. The youngest brother became king. And although the other two always swore that he was stupid and that 
they would have done the job much better. I think he's stupid, don't you? Yes, I do. We would have done the job much better, wouldn't we? Yes, we would. What a shame we were born so brilliant. Ha, ha, ha. Despite all that, the stupid prince and his wife ruled wisely and well to the end of their days.